Okay. So, uh, so actually, what I'll try to do today is to study some simple formulas, simple formulas, uh, and uh, explain some general motivations in relation to these simple formulas, okay? About equivalent cohomology. Because it's the only way how I can uh, answer uh, the Dom's question. That I consider very important. So, <clears throat> so the question is, consider D equivariant. That is D plus pi IV. Okay. So how to treat phi? In, an, in another terms, what is the natural meaning of phi? Okay. Actually, one way so I will, I will start with two classical ways, classical one and classical two approaches, and both would treat phi being the coordinate in the formal series, okay? And uh, then I, uh, I'll explain the modern. And you will see how important it is to divide over phi. You see, if you are changing the main definition, ah, Sand is already with us. Okay, good. <laughs> so, Pasha, could you give uh, Sanhu the right to record? Of course, just one second. Uh, hmm. Shall I also do a recording for the... Like yes, please. You, you yes, please. There is, you know, uh, there is so-called uh, two contours of technology in the modern world. One is Eastern, one is Western. And there are some problems. Hmm. <laughs> so we need to be modern. So we need to make recording both in the East and in the West. I have we, my own too. Yes, because, oh, because we are globalists. I think we are globalists. We believe uh, in mathematics that is okay. one for the world, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so classical treatment one comes comes from Chevalier. Okay, I never okay, Sam. Sorry, sorry, Pell. I I forgot I say, how, uh, how to spell. No, you, you, you were there, you were just missing one last letter. <laughs> so from Notre Dame, Du Lake, <laughs> you, you, you should know you should know. Okay. Duvac. Okay, maybe this. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so so the so here idea was the following: in approach of Chevalier, if you have a manifold X, and and suppose you have a Lie algebra G acting on X. You have a similar differential. So that is 
in modern notation, it's written like this. In mathematical physics, in notation of mathematical physics, it's written like this. So I will not write BV, star, etc. And I am not even writing Q. I call it D to say that there is, there is no physics here. Okay? And it squares to zero. Then, if you have X, you, have, you can immediately get PT of X. So that is the spectrum of omega of X. Immediately you have the following thing. Immediately you have a super algebra. It's promoted to the super algebra. So what I'd like to say that it is a kind of canonical promotion, you see? Mm -hmm. Whenever you have X, you have the space of differential forms, okay? So, it is stupid to think that we only have uh, Lie algebra. We always have this super algebra. And this super algebra as a vector space is G plus G shifted by one, okay? And the differential, unfortunately, it's not a Chevalier. And I don't know who should I mention, either Weil or Cartan or, okay. Even they don't remember who, who discovered that. So let me write it in this way. Maybe it will, be, it will be good to say that it is semi-direct. Okay, I never remember how to write it this way or another way. Maybe, maybe the other way around. This is so illogical, you see, okay. And of course, not only there is a super algebra that is acting, so we can write down this. We also can promote it to, we can add here differential on X and also this. Okay, from the point of view of modern mathematics, we should consider this as a uh, Q manifold, okay? Mm -hmm. Not only this omega of X is a Q manifold, but also this is a Q manifold. So when I speak in this generality, someone I actually wanted someone to say that not only X is canonically promoted to PTX. You see, it's not only Omega are naturally connected to X, but also its differentiations also occur. So most probably there should be an even bigger picture here bigger canonical picture. But for some reason, we study some subalgebra 
in the space of uh, in the space of diffeomorphisms. Okay. So we naturally have this structure. And then everything here squares to zero. Moreover, you may even consider this block as exact with respect to this block. OK? In particular, okay, so Tasha, I see that you tried to compute it in your mind. You shouldn't compute it in your mind. Yeah, it no, I, 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 yeah, this formulas look, for look very, formulas look ugly. So, yeah. So you, you see, so, so it's my failure that formulas look ugly. So here, here is the action of the super, uh, here are the structure constants of the super algebra. Sure. And here is differential. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd like to say to tell you that this is not that ugly, because this line actually is. So let me call this. You see, I always like d dot. You see, maybe it's because I am from totalitarian country. We we make everything total. So. So this object is d dot applied to what? Okay. So this so this is not that ugly anymore. Now, concerning this, I don't quite remember how to write it uh, in the easiest way. Okay. Here I put a question mark. In any case, I will not need this on the billion story today. But basically, what, what you should think of is that all this comes very natural if you have the basic super manifold, namely manifold X and uh, subalgebra of if differentiation. Okay, so we have this. Now the issue is what is the space on which uh, this differential should act? So people started, of course, from the case of algebra. So in the case of algebra, D Chevalier was acting, of course, on differential forms on X times what? In purely even case, you may say that it is uh, external algebra of G. Mm -hmm. So that's what exactly what uh, originally Chevalier introduced. Now, when you are doing so-called su superization, you, do, you can do it in a naive way. You say that uh, even coordinates, uh, that, uh, odd co that uh, even coordinates are promoted to odd coordinates. So in this way, of course, So I guess you it's exterior it. exterior of G star probably. Yes. So if you come from the Chevalier side, you would see this. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why, very naturally, you put here uh, formal series of C5. Very natural super, very natural super, super symmetrization. Okay. And then uh, you take good old formally, formulas of Chevalier and you just say, all computations, everything goes the same. And that's why you have this formal series in five. So it's very natural. Now, you must say, you may say, okay, let us, let us reduce to invariant forms and we will see what people originally started studying, okay? And the, from now on, I consider uh, the algebra to be abelian, okay? So Lie algebra is abelian, however, it's not necessarily one dimensional. So I have this. So I have no ghosts anymore. So this seems to be the scope of my theory. And now let me, let me tell you one lesson from supersymmetrization. So, okay. so th there were some other terms you just, uh, but they were exact. So you just set them to zero or what? No, you see, uh, I, I consider uh, a billion case. Yes. And I consider invariant functions or invariant forms. Yeah. Ah, okay. But still, so invariant, but not horizontal. So there was still the term uh, ah, no, okay, you wrote that down. Of course. But sorry, sorry there, there, there are ghosts, but they, they just commute, right? So, uh, so, so there are ghosts, but, uh, I, but I'm not considering, I would say, deformation theory. So I so there should be the so-called, as physicists say, ghost number zero or, or invariance. So when I would like to consider invariance, it means that I consider the term uh, in the ghost, in the C ghost number zero. Okay, so we, we are not writing also the term D over DC, this, this we don't write. No, we are not. Okay. That's why I erased this term. So, mm -hmm. so when I come to this differential from the Chevalier point of view, I have this setting. Now I want to tell you one lesson from supersymmetrization. So uh, when Bere so it was the first Grassmann who, who said that we need to that we can consider uh, odd variables similarly to even. There were also Beresian who continued this. And the main reason was everything is the same. However, there is one peculiarity in this supersymmetrization. Maybe there are several peculiarities, but I will consider one important but very characteristic peculiarity. In the classical or odd story, in the class, sorry, in the classical or so called even story, you sometimes have uh, even things and sometimes you have odd things, okay? Like differential forms. You have them in classical story, but they are odd. 
So when you go to when you do super symmetrization, I mean when you are doing so-called super mathematics, you need to be a bit careful with uh, what happens with uh, with the things that were odd in the classical case. How what happens in the you need to think what happens in the super case. So first example of this phenomena is so called phenomena of integral forms, integral differential forms on the super manifold. But I am not going to talk about it right now. Another phenomena. Okay, I'll admit this. And, and, and here the phenomena is that when you go here and consider it as a form of power series and phi, you may ask a question that you would never ask in the classical case. What would happen if we first analytically continue in phi? Or even what would happen if we consider other manifolds with coordinate phi, not only formal disk. Because the formula that we have, in our case, this formula, has a nice meaning, not only when phi is in the formal disk, it has nice meaning in the broader case. So here we have this peculiarity. So, so it was the first reason why people prefer to treat it this way and uh, forget to think it in the broader case. Let me give another argument why people uh, wanted to treat it in the uh, formal power series case. So I'll call it classical arguments too. So classical argument two is the theory of cohomology of the factor or call set. It's like this, suppose the group, the Lee group, is acting on what I will call E to without fixed points. So It is this setting. Group is acting on E here on the base space B. Okay. It is the case of fiber bundle. Describe cohomology, and we understand it even cohomology of a, a, of a ring of B in terms of some calculus, some calculus on E.
So before I will do this, let me give some motivation behind the motivation. Okay. So motivation behind the motivation is the following. In many cases, topology of E is much simpler than that of B. Actually, you can even say that there are so-called uh, classifying spaces, okay, where topology of E is trivial, okay. But before we will think about classifying spaces, let me consider an example. So when people started all this, they have the following example. CPM. You see, you see, everybody is thinking about CPM at some moment, right? So CPM is S two N plus one over U one, right? So even if you don't know about classifying spaces, you can see. Look. This 2n plus 1 dimensional sphere has simple topology. It has cohomology only in dimension 0 and uh, top dimension. So it's very simple space. Meanwhile, CPM has more complicated cohomology. So people know it. It has very interesting ring. It has cohomology in every even dimension. So by so so here the idea would be to lift problem of computation of cohomology of CPM, not only CPM, similar spaces. into the question of cohomology of the factor. Actually, it's because uh, put it differently. People thought that the topology of the group is captured by topology of the base. Okay, they studied universal base, etc. They put here infinity, so this is contractible, but uh, it was one of their motivations. Okay? Good. So, so let me briefly recall what people are doing here. They said that here we have differential forms on E. Here there are differential forms on B. These are included into differential forms on E. And the inclusion is that here is projection, 
So this inclusion I is uh, you take a person now when you do this you sometimes assume that this uh, that these forms that this function that these uh, groups are compact in many cases you like compact groups here at least it's uh, the case of this particular example so you may ask what is the condition but this condition is not related to the components so what is this condition the differential form on e came from b and of course condition is like this lv omega equals to zero iv omega equals to zero. so it is so imposing this condition you get the image of i is defined by this now note that uh, we want this i and image of i not uh, as a final goal on of our research we actually wanted to study cohomology okay so instead of studying d on image of i we may say the following <clears throat> it is enough to impose the following condition d on omega equals to zero and iv on omega equals to zero so this is called closed this is called horizontal i will call it omega e in order to say that we impose it on differential forms on e okay so we would like to study these guys on e now here we have a system of two equations and uh, let us for a moment restrict to this case of u1 one can get these two equations namely basic forms if one would study omega e times formal formal power series and pi with differential and also with this condition now let us see if omega e belongs to the image of i and also omega e represents 
the closed the closed form represents the class on of homologies of B. Then these two things are satisfied. So So we have this complex and uh, HB definitely is, is inside this complex. Now, what is interesting is that uh, <coughs> In cohomology of B, <coughs> there is a special element, Name sorry, what's it in the, what's it in the, in the lower right of the board, if omega, omega E represents what? Represents the class of, the class of Omega E represents the class of uh, so if I have okay I'm uh, I'm moving too fast so suppose I have a class in the image of E okay mm -hmm. so of course D commutes with pi then these two these two conditions are satisfied. Okay, so it means that uh, so you so it means that the closed forms on B are definitely here. Mm -hmm. So how, how did this uh, addition to the differential arise here from D? How we came to D plus five times IV. At the moment, at the moment, at the moment, it, at the moment, this, at the moment, this came as, as this second approach. It came as an observation. So just equivalent to writing of the system. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. And when we make this observation into this clever way, we see, first of all, that uh, cohomology of the base are also equivalent cohomology because of this. Now, there is multiplication cohomology both on the base on the fiber, no problem, by multiplication of differential form. Now, we have another observation. Another observation is that cohomology of the base, uh, now that there is an action, okay, okay, from this, from the left, from one approach. In cohomology of B, there is a special element. And this special element is the first chain class of L, of uh, E. That is, uh, in the U1 case, the connection, uh, the curvature. You see, our case is kind of, part is a particular case. Here we have a vibration, okay? Mm -hmm. What's more important, here we have non-degenerate vibration. So an old, uh, it's, here we have a bundle, bundle, you see? I think that when we have a, when people say vibration, they mean that fiber can degenerate. When you say a bundle, the fiber cannot degenerate. 
So it's better to say that here we have a bundle. Actually, the bundle in English is something like this. So this is a bundle, right? So you are rotating over a cylinder or something. Okay? So the loop can never degenerate. Basically, this, uh, this is a bundle. Okay? In this case, it's a bundle. No, no, nothing degenerates. That's why we have the theory of connection. Okay? That's why we have the curvature element. And then we have a nice observation that in the covariant cohomology, here, DA, okay, I will, I will write it this way. D plus phi IV applied to the connection form equals to F plus phi. So the thing that is exact in equivalent cohomology is the difference between F and phi. Very simple formula. So that's why you say R. Here, here it's a special element, and this special element in the covariant cohomology is, rep is rep represented by phi. So that's great. So this was. Of course, this was a very brief explanation of the theory of equivalent cohomology as it is written in books, okay? So I gave two classical introductions to equivalent cohomology and in both approaches, it is very natural to see that uh, everything is acting here. Or you may say, even polynomials. Okay. Sometimes you can say polynomials. So you can say that everybody knows that the covariant cohomology, either from the Chevalier point of view or from this nice theory of bundles, X here. Now, now, now I'm coming here with something new, not me, somebody like 30 or 40 years ago, but not 60, okay? And somebody said, look, what would be if we will consider this phi as a number, such that we would allow to do something like this. So, Chevalier, okay, the spirit of Chevalier, the ghost of Chevalier would say, no, it's not my science and was not discussed. Then person from the bundle theory, okay, he would say, come on, if you allow such a thing that 
in my favorite case of bundles, you will lose everything. Let us see. If V has no fixed points, let us say case of the bundle, a covariant cohomology vanished. So people who are doing these bundles, connections, etc., they say, no, we are not going to study this. It kills our theory. It completely ruins our theory. We invented such nice theory, you know, uh, in particular, we said that SN2N plus one over U1, that cohomology of this is polynomials of this phi or phi to the M. We have these nice formulas and you want to ruin it. By the way, if you look at these nice formulas, you may see that this ring is actually localized at zero. So when we go to C star, nothing is left. Because allowing one over five means that you are throwing away zero. Okay, but But maybe this is too complicated. Let us consider the simplest example, the simpler example. Consider B plus phi IV. In the simplest case, where X is just as one. Why not? Okay. So uh, invariant, so theta would be the angle coordinates, angle coordinates. And let us, let us say something about cohomology. Ah, by the way, I want to, I want to say that when you study this equivalent cohomology over C of phi over polynomials. You have zero in the spectrum. So you can always put phi to zero, right? And, and in this way, you say that you have a deformation theory. So that's why this thing is not expected to, to vanish. Let us compute it explicitly. So there are only two uh, invariant uh, objects here, one and d theta, right? Nothing else. So d kills both of them, okay? So differential, equivalent differential acts like this. So over C of phi, you cannot say one is not exact over C of phi, right? One is not exact.
So everything here is closed, but one is not exact, so you, so you have cohomology. However, if you allow to divide by phi, but one is exact over C of phi prime minus. So basically, that's how it goes. So equivalent stuff is a new game with the old formulas. And now, before I'll do a break, Pasha, I think, I feel that I need to make a five minutes break. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. After I'll make the following important remark, okay? That would be important later on. It is about motivation of motivation, okay? So CPN is not only S2 n plus 1 over U1. The, this guy is also a submanifold in R 2n plus 2. Mm, it's important. And we can use this. So the goal would be not only to go from this to this. These two spaces are curved, as physicists say. But try to live here. OK? So this would be a goal or motivation number one. Not just not not only to simplify topology, but to simplify calculus. And we need this R two n plus two if you would like to do quantum field theory. By the way, it is very desirable at some moment to have linear space, actually a fine space. It's one motivation. Second motivation is that we would like to understand CPN as C 2N, sorry, N plus 1, like this. And I put here the quotient box. This is almost a bundle. However, only almost. Because actually we need to subtract zero. And when we are subtracting zero, we are actually, actually coming here, as I explained in my previous talk. Okay? So all this development is the attempt to find formulas that compute complicated topology in terms of some simple spaces or even simpler space. And the breakthrough comes when it happens. Let me tell you what. that actually all topology of CPN is sitting exactly in the place that you are subtracting. Surprise.
So, so it is a surprise that uh, we will get in the end of consideration. That's when we will go not to Sn n plus one, but to R n R two n plus two or to C n plus one. We will see where topology. Okay, so I would say almost. So you're saying that the weights of the action just don't matter at all. They matter, mm -hmm. but they matter in the vicinity of the zero. Okay, yes. So, uh, yeah. okay, and uh, it's, uh, and I think that it's a moment for me to make a break. Mm -hmm. And and because of this development, and this development somehow need enlarging the scope of a covariant differential. So this is a good motivation to overrun two previous classical guys and to come to, to late 80s, okay? Or late 70s and 80s. So this is half of my answer to Dong's question. How it happens that we are doing something very different. Okay, now five minutes break, right?
Okay. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So. Well, okay. I'm sorry for being late. Mm, but, no problem. Uh, so. Uh, so let us come to this new usage of all the covariant cohomology. Okay. So, I will still consider the case of CPM. So, my plan would be the following. We will make some compute. So, we have already computed the covariant cohomology of the plane. Okay. Now, let us use it to study equivalent cohomology of CPM. Okay? So, our goal would be the following. First, formula. Second, conjecture. 
third integral realization. So I hope that here we will get an idea what does what does this formula mean? And then there will be an integral proof. So hopefully we'll do all this. Okay? So let us start with the simplest example. CP2. Oh, sorry, CP1. Let me consider the C star action on CP1 with U1 here. In homogeneous coordinates, it would mean that we have Z0, Z1. Okay? And let C star act like lambda, like z1, z0, going to lambda z1, z0. So, uh, Andy, that part of the board is pretty much invisible. OK. Oh, now it is visible. I don't know. I, I guess it depends on how your camera behaves. It's called smart camera. So it's smarter than I. <laughs> okay, so still, CP1. We have Z, okay, Z1, Z0. So, so there was the gauge C star. It takes Z1, Z0 to lambda gauge. Z1. Lambda gauge Z0. Okay? Yes. And there, there, there is also C star that I have called external. Z1 goes, say, to lambda external Z1. Z0 goes to if I put here lambda external, it will be the same. I can put here just Z0. It is clear that I could equivalently put lambda here with the minus y sign, OK? And of course, I consider u1 that is here. Okay, so now let us compute equivalent cohomology of the CP1 as a function. of what? Of lambda external, okay? Of phi external. We will do it using localization. So let us see, what are the fixed points? Fixed points are, are orbits in the space 
the one is yellow. Mm-hmm. So could you so let us see the fixed orbit. Well, so one zero. orbit is clear. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe Pasha, you will give me this orbit or someone. Because I want you to do this. Let's see. So Z1 equals zero, right? Uh, it's a good orbit. Uh, it's an orbit. Actually, if you, if you multiply, it's an orbit. So it's a point. Mm-hmm. Let us call it point one. Mm-hmm. Do we have another orbit? Or Z1 equals infinity. Orbit, orbit. So let us count orbit in terms of its finite representatives. I see, I see, I see. Um, no, 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 how can it be? Oh, so it, yes, yes. It cannot be. It okay, be. I, I, I do it in 10, so to wake you up. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So one orbit is clear. What is another orbit? So we are looking. Ah, ah, the zero equals zero. Right? So this one was mm-hmm. the first orbit that was called P1, very obvious. And the second orbit, mm-hmm. it is not obvious. So. The representative goes to lambda e zero. Mm-hmm. So that is, of course, lambda g one zero. That's why that's why it's the same. Okay. Okay. So we need to find contributions from the points. By the way, while we are finding contributions from the points, let me tell you that that when you are writing C star external, there is a symmetry. Lambda external zero is equivalent to lambda external plus mu mu. You see, I can add to external this thing. Okay. So, so what does it mean? Lambda. What 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 does it mean? Lambda external comma zero. What does it mean? What does comma zero mean? Okay. No. Maybe not zero. You see, here's one. Okay, so, okay, so, you see, you may ask why I pick here one and not zero, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, would I pick here uh, another thing? So, how many C externals of this type do I have? Let me call it tilde. Mm-hmm. How different this is from that? Yeah, not very. I mean, not very. <laughs> Actually, they are the same. 
Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, now let us see what would be okay. So now we know what CP one is. Mm-hmm. So it, now we see that there are two fixed points. Mm-hmm. By the way, we know this is direction, of course. From the north and from the north to the south. And we have these two localization planes. Hmm? So the only thing we need to find is the contribution from these two, so from these two planes. So we need to find contribution from this point and from this point. Mm-hmm. So, hint, if the contribution from first point is to pi divided by pi, then what, could, what should be contribution from the second point? So when you said that we want to find equivalent homology, actually, actually you're asking for equivalent volume. No, for equivalent cohomology. Because equivalent volume would be equal to zero, as you understand. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So since equivalent volume should be zero, we could be more careful with science and write out and write down this. So that's why we see that the space of equivalent cohomology is what? The space of equivalent cohomology is uh, is two-dimensional with the contributions of these two points with these two coefficients. So how so so how can you write down a ring? So it's actually the space of functions on two points. Could you guess such a ring? How to write down such a ring? So far, I have no idea what what this picture with these two arrows and things attached to the ends of two arrows mean. Absolutely no idea. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Thank you, Pasha. So it was the end of the last of the last lecture that the integral of omega one, etc., omega m. Yes, but that was about integrals, and now you're asking about cohomology. So. Yes. Yes. But of course. Uh, you understand that uh, cohomology is something that is uh, that stays in when you have an integral. So we assume that integral for a moment that is that it's non-degenerate on cohomology. Mm-hmm. So recall mm-hmm. that in non in non-equivalent case. The ring was polynomials of sigma divided by sigma square. Okay, yes. And uh, the non degenerate functional was. I'm sorry. 
Alo? Alo? Вы знаете, я сейчас учусь. Значит, у меня подъезд номер два. Okay, so I, I need to go out for two or three minutes. Could you find modification of this formula, please? While I'll, I'll be absent for two or three minutes, maximum. Did yesterday's lecture continue after sort of whatever 5 a.m. or uh, no, no, okay, no, because no, there was it, just, it just one question. Ah, okay, it just seems that there's some chunk of missing information <laughs> that that Andre is referring to, but I, maybe not. I think at the moment what he's referring to with this ring structure is from a couple of lectures ago. Uh, no, right, 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 yes. With this 2 pi over phi, that seems to be a contribution to the equivalent volume. Yes. Mm.
Okay, I'm sorry. So, do you have any idea how this no. form has to be generalized? No, at some point you told us how to how this formula is generalized, but this doesn't help me in the sense that you asked a question and it's like, a, I don't think that I have enough information actually to answer this question. Ah, okay. So you, so, okay. So you may... I have no idea what it means to calculate the equivalent homology by localization. You're like asking me, what is the last digit of pi? I can tell you that it's three, but I have no idea what you're asking and what okay. it means, what the answer means. Okay. So, so it actually means the following. So, 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 so let us see how it goes. You have a covariant integral. And here we have differential form. Mm -hmm. And this equivalent thing is e to the minus lambda d equivariant regulator omega one omega n. And of course, these forms should be equivalently closed. Okay. Yes, you are right. I need to convince you. So, so how to get, now the question is, suppose we have a form that is D closed. How to construct a covariant closed form? Start with this omega. Mm -hmm. So we need to do the following manipulation phi IV omega <laughs> should be equal to what? Let me put here P form. It should be D omega p minus two. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I mean that omega equivariant is a sum of omega p plus omega p minus two and maybe some other terms. Actually, the amount of terms could be big enough, but in the case of CP2, here we will have Luckily, only two terms. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so having having so p could be either two or zero. Having a two form, having a two form here, we need to find we need to find a function such that phi i v omega is d of this function that I call omega naught. So we can we can compute it explicitly in this example, but the only thing that you should know is that such a function exists. Okay? Existence of such function, omega naught, comes from the fact that if you apply D here, you would have zero. So the left hand side is exact. So because omega was you uh, one invariant. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there is some omega naught. So for okay. omega, there is some omega naught. And uh, the only thing that we need is the value of this omega naught at P1 and the value of this omega naught at P2, at two fixed points. So it's the only thing that we need from this computation. <coughs> so 
So, so omega equivariant uh, that is continuation <coughs> of the class of cohomology for phi equals zero hmm, is omega plus. Okay, so here is phi. I can. I can take, I can extract this phi explicitly. I will put here, I'll take it here. I'll call it phi omega tilde naught. Okay, so it's a simple formula. The only thing I need to know is the value of this omega tilde naught at P1 and P2. And integral of omega equivariant is what? <coughs> is phi. Okay, I need to go to the better illuminated piece of the board. Integral of omega equivariant, and I mean equivariant integral, is what? <coughs> it is phi omega zero at P1 minus phi omega zero at P2 divided by what? Divided by phi. Okay. So it's actually omega zero of P1 minus omega zero of P2. So uh, what's what's the logic here? I mean, you you, you calculated some equivalent extensions, uh, some some integral, but but the question was calculate equivalent cohomology. That was a completely different yes. question. Yes, yes. The the question was to compute equivalent cohomology. Why does this have anything uh, to do with integrals? Ah, uh, it's because it's because I am assuming that integral that equivalent integral is a non-degenerate functional on equivalent cohomology. Okay. So having a covariant integral, I I not only compute the ring, but I compute both ring and the linear functional on it. Mm -hmm. I get it all together. So I compute both ring and equivariant functional. Ring and the functional on it. Um, so sorry, I, I'm, I'm missing some steps here. So, but anyway, so what, what, what do you read off from this formula then? So uh, what, what is the uh, putative answer for, for the, Equivalent cohomology. Ah. First, equivalent cohomology is a two dimensional space over C. So, because what? Because this answer depends only on two numbers. Yes. Yes, because uh, this answer depends on two numbers. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All the rest do not enter the ring. All the rest drop out.
So it's the first thing. Second thing. <coughs> the linear functional in natural basis, in obvious basis. Actually, I'm not sure, just in, in the sense of linear, linear algebra, how can a one linear functional can, how can it be linearly, how can it be non-degenerate? A quadratic form can be non-degenerate, but how can a, how, how, you understand the question? Uh, yes. Uh, I think, uh, thank you. So, okay, so there, so there is a linear, uh, Okay, actually, when I say non-degenerate, I mean the following, okay? Mm -hmm. That uh, the combination of ring multiplication times uh -huh. linear functional. Okay, okay, so the quadratic form is, okay. the bilinear form is non-degenerate, I see. Okay, mm -hmm. it's, enough, it's enough so that bilinear form is non-degenerate. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So linear functional in this obvious basis is pairing with one minus one. Two pi. Take contributions at one point, take contributions at another point, and add them with the minus sign. <coughs> now about the ring structure. Mm -hmm. You have a map from equivalent cohomology to zero component of equivalent cohomology. The ring structure is represented by uh, pointwise multiplication of uh, zero, zero component part of equivalent cohomology. In particular, there are two, two bases in the covariant cohomology. Mm -hmm. so, so this is an explanation, not a new statement. Base one, one and omega Fubini studi equivariantly promoted. And also base two. <laughs> dual two, dual two fixed point. So, in particular, <coughs> when I take one from the base one, it is, of course, equivalently closed uh, form. Mm -hmm. One, and here I have point one, here I have point two. Here I have value one, here I have value one. 
I can take omega for minus two. So here I have pi. Here I has have minus pi. If you vary. So form definitely has no value at points. Form cannot be evaluated at points. However, it's a covariant extension. Yeah. It can be evaluated. Mm -hmm. Now, integrals. Equivalent integral of what? Of so it, it's a it's equivalent extension is up to a constant. No. Why no? Not? But um, if I change the, ah. if I change it. I think it is, right? Ah. It is just a change of basis. Yeah, so so, uh, so you, you can always add to one thing another thing. Yeah. So when you are, when you are equivalently extending this, you can, you can always add at the constant, yes. Mm -hmm. so, it's a variant, so equivariant uh, integral of one equals one over phi minus one over phi equals zero. Equivariant integral of omega for being studi equivariant is one over phi, and now I would say that here computation would be plus, and here I'll have a phi. Mm -hmm. Now let us. To convince ourselves that that's what actually happens, let us compute the equivalent extension of Fubini Studi form. Omega Fubini Studi is this. R D R D theta. Okay, and then we need to find the covariant extension. So R D R one plus R square square. Here we can draft. Should be equal to phi d omega zero. Sorry, phi, phi stands here. So this is phi IV omega Pubini studi, and here is just omega naught. So it's clear that that omega for being is two D naught is this integral. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe with the minus. Minus one half, I think, something like that. Oh, m m maybe here it's two R D R. Okay, mm -hmm. so okay, up to. Mm -hmm. up to. 
actually not. No, no, no one half. Because of two here and two here. Mm -hmm. Ah, no. Okay. So, okay. Up to... So, basic, basic thing is this. Mm -hmm. Last call. So omega of any study at zero is say minus one. Omega for any study zero at infinity is zero. So main thing is this difference. It's about equivalent extension. Mm -hmm. And of course here is a pi. So that's, so that's how computation is going on. Mm -hmm. The difference of contribution here, so actually, if I take this constant to be equal to zero, so I'll get contribution pi divided by phi from one point, say minus zero from another. So, equivalent integral of Fubini studi form equivalently continued is one. Mm -hmm. And now, in particular, we can take limit phi going to zero, it is still one. But we are interested in the ring structure, not only in the functional. So, as a ring, we see that the ring is the ring of function on two points with the opposite contribution of these functions. So let me propose the integral formula. Up to one half. That, uh, this formula is a natural promotion of the formula that everybody knows. This formula is included here. So here the contour integral goes around points minus phi and plus phi. Here the contour integral is around zero. Mm -hmm. This is an integral formula. Mm -hmm. You 
see here we have uh, actually space of functions on two points. Mm -hmm. okay. With what? With one goes to one, and for finish two D goes where? It goes to sigma. Yeah, so why? Okay, let me elaborate on this formula more. Mm -hmm. I can rewrite this formula in the following way. Here, here I have an equality. So l -l 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 let me check the sign. No, I got it correct. I got this sign correct. So when you are asking about the cohomology, equivalent cohomology of uh, CP1, it's still kind of as a vector space, it's polynomials of sigma modulo sigma squared equals zero, but with this probinial so, structure. Now cohomology. So, so here, here are cohomologies of sigma with the relation sigma squared equals phi squared. Mm. Ah. Um, so right. you see, I'm writing the same formula. Mm -hmm. So maybe, yes. I, maybe I may miss factor of two that I'll pick up later. No, no, that, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But basically, when I'm computing this residue, I'm computing two pi and value when sigma equals to pi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you see sigma is evaluated now at two points are pi minus pi. So I actually see I think there is a factor of two missing. Okay, so I'll try to find this factor of two. Okay, I don't remember this factor of two. Mm -hmm. See, I put these things together, I have to here to five. Is canceled out.
And here I have contribution. And here I have contributions from the fixed points. So this is the computation. So this representation is localization to two points. And this formula is looks as a generalization of known formula. So, at the level of formulas, there is nothing to discuss. When you look at this formula, you may simply go to coordinate sigma over phi and say that it's function two points plus one or minus one. Um, so could you say that again? So, no. So, so if you look at this formula, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it's not nothing to discuss. So, so there is a formula, okay. Mm -hmm. so this formula is definitely about evaluating polynomial at two points. Yes. And weighting them with an opposite side. Mm -hmm. It is the meaning of this formula. And we get it from localization. Yes. The meaning of this formula at the moment is more mysterious. Mm -hmm. Namely, why do we have these two factors and what does it actually mean? I think I know where I made a mistake. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe one shift is fine and the other shift is zero. Yes. One shift is fine, other shift is zero, according mm -hmm. to the weights mm -hmm. of this system. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, it would be very instructive to generalize, that, to generalize it to CPN. So there are many things to generalize. First of all, instead of writing B plus phi IV, we can study B plus phi A IVA. Mm -hmm. 
you might say the, the things are definitely are basically the same because uh, here I can re rewrite it as D plus I D A V A. Now, I need to study the integral of a CN. The integral is basically the same. Computations are basically the same. The issue may be what type of regulator should I choose? Okay. So let me consider the example of C square and then write down the general formula in order not to write down too many letters. Okay? Maybe I can write it in general here. So the only thing that I would like, I would like to, I would like to pick up a special basis for for VA. Of course, I'd, li I'd like to treat this VA as diagonal vector fields in uh, Z coordinates. Lambda A I zi d over dzi minus complex conjugation so here i have three indices of i So I need to write down summation explicitly. Now, in this particular case, I need to choose regulator. So let me assume that lambda that lambdas are positive. It, it will be I could generalize later on. So uh, let me then pick up as a regulator some mu i, and uh, I will put here. 
So, 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 let me recall how I did it last time. Last time I managed to have a quadratic integral, right? So here uh, I can, uh, here let me try to do the same. So last time it was something like z. So, so, so there was a one form, right? But what, what type of one form I'd like to get here? Okay, so uh, I'll pick up, so let me pick up something uh, simple to facilitate my integration process. So here we have D, okay? Let me pick up this one and hope that Things would work with work. Okay. Don't we want some reality condition? No. Maybe yes. Mm -hmm. And here I have this lambda. So what I uh, so what I want from the first term, I of course want standard differential form. It would help me to integrate. <clears throat> now, field VA is lambda AI ZI I over DZI. But this thing would fit here. Okay, and I'll get lambda i a of course phi a the i modulo square You see, when I write it like this, I maybe don't even need the second term. Mm -hmm. Maybe this would be enough. Mm -hmm. So that's what I have an exponent with lambda. And here, of course, I have sum over A. So I have a Gaussian integral. And uh, everything else is evaluation at zero. And uh, the answer would be simple. So this will give me one over product from I going from one to M by I and I, I. And here I have a sum. So 
but that's it. And of course, here I have differential form, and I will have this differential form evaluated at zero. And maybe I'll have something like 2 pi to the power n. So I'm not quite sure about this. So this is the result. So I have this result, and then I want to study my favorite example. EPM. And now I have many C stars. And these n copies of C stars are acting on this CPM. And again, I have fixed points. Now, let me find this C star as above. Is Z zero up to the end. So C star acts as follows. Lambda A. Similar formula. The only thing is that A runs from zero to N. So in this way, I have the action of, uh, of C star to the N plus one. However, one C star is not, is not included. And now I have everything that I need to compute the action. By the way, I have a feeling that I ran out of time. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, there are maybe five minutes or so. so. Ah, minutes. okay. Then let me, let me tell you something. Let me give you, okay. So it's better uh, to postpone the completion to the next section, right? Mm -hmm. So let me give you the formula that I'd like ah, that I that I'd like you to reproduce. That is the generalization of the formula. So it, it would be very interesting to reproduce the following formula. Okay, so there, so there should be a shift, yes. So this seems to be the universal formula. Actually, I'm confused what's happened to the, to the little lambdas. To these little lambdas? Yes. They are the parameters of, of the yes, vector the fields. Of C star. Yes. So their values of integrals depend on them. So no, no it's, it's parameterization. 
when you say that C star is acting on something, you need to specify how, right? Mm -hmm. So this formula corresponds to the weight that is zero, okay. zero, one, zero, zero, zero. Okay, yes. Um. So these are weights. This is the action itself. This point goes to this point. This is a group action. Or, in other terms, this formula corresponds to the vector field VA, that is, DA, D over DZA, minus Z bar A, D over DZ bar A, and here I say, no summation over A. Mm -hmm. So this is rotation of the phase of the eighth coordinate, of the eighth homogeneous coordinate. But previously in this formula, there was a, a lambda also. Lambda stands here. So this is a group. So when lambda, ah, I see. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So this lambda is a weight. Yes. I'm sorry. I. I don't want to change lambda here. New A. Mm -hmm. So this lambda is a weight. Yes. It is in this example. It's like one or zero. Mm -hmm. This mu is a C star number. Uh, no, okay, but why why doesn't the result depend on lambdas, not on mu's, but on lambdas? A result, yeah, because lambdas, lambdas. So it's a general formula. Mm -hmm. So lambdas. So lambdas enter into the formulas for these. Yes, yes, yes. So 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 well, so so this is a general formula of localization. Mm -hmm. Because you have, so this formula is a formula. When you have complicated manifold X mm -hmm. with the action, mm -hmm. and here you have a plane near the fixed point. Yes. And near the fixed point, you have weights of your sister action. They are called lambdas. Yes. This explicit formula is the case where X is CPN and C star to the N is ah, the standard one is, is this. You may call it standard, but so there is such C star. If you change, if you change C star action, so you, you may imagine the other C star action. Okay, yes. This is for a standard C star action. So this is a general formula. And this is particular form. So the exercise is to see that this general formula is an answer so that, th that this general formula comes to this formula. The hint, of course, is to see that here we have n plus one points. Okay? and evaluate the weight of each point just by decomposing this product into monomials. You 
you may check degrees, okay? You may check degrees. This thing, so lambda basically is zero or one. This thing has phi to the degree n in denominator. Mm -hmm. When you will decompose this formula in monomials that you do during your first semester when you study calculus, mm -hmm. it's obviously this thing sum of this expression with something here, depending only on phi. The thing that stand here should contain phi in the degree n. Things standing here also contain phi in degree n. So the exercise is to show that this product is exactly what stands here. Mm -hmm. Sigma minus phi one, sigma minus phi two, one over sigma. How do we decompose? Okay. So first we decompose this product by one minus by two. Okay. And here we have one over sigma. And then we decompose again. So you see, I'm, I'm always solving this problem, but mm -hmm. because I don't want computational side to interfere. And you decompose again. And of course you get this denominators. And you need to see here the weights. Mm -hmm. That's what I, you see, that, that's what I propose to, to get for, to, for, uh, for the next talk. And then mm -hmm. later on, I'll explain you the very different integral uh, derivation of this product formula mm -hmm. of the covariant integral. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, at the moment, my goal was to compute the covariant integrals to convince you that they are computable. Such that you could compute, such that you could compute it for CPN. So I would say one surprise at a time. Mm -hmm. So we will start with this formula next time. Yes, I, I, I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. So you will have time to, to think about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's it. So, okay, I go, you see, I go slower than I expected, but mm -hmm. I think that uh, I'm trying my best to develop the picture and uh... Yeah, thank you. 
Okay, you are welcome. Mm -hmm. And uh, tomorrow, tomorrow uh, I will discuss with uh, I will try to discuss with Ding uh, giving Tal formulas a bit. Okay. So giving Tal uh, that's not the same as giving Tal partition function that you were mentioning. Yes, 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 yes. No, no, no. no. I will discuss equivariant. Equ I will discuss equivariant volumes of the space of holomorphic maps between toric manifolds. But didn't we agree that we we're going to discuss uh, the, the another half of the answer, my first two question, I mean, the, about special coordinates and mirror maps and so on? Ah, of course, I'm fine with discussing. No, no, no. no, no. Uh, so, uh, so let me, you see, since we meet only once a week, so, so uh, remind me the set. So, so mm -hmm. what, what what did we discuss already? So, so we, we discuss. So we see that the the tens, uh, the total of solution to this general Torelli problem gives you very special solution. Have some symmetries to yes. extract the commutativity relation from WDVV. That's very good. You you say you said that we're gonna discuss about the special coordinates out of it tomorrow. Yes. That was our original plan, ah, I guess. Ah, okay. So okay, okay. So I'll postpone giving tell for one week. Okay. <laughs> then uh, then yes, you are right. Yes, I had no time to discuss that. Sounds good. So Sounds so, good. So, so so I will so I will discuss differential geometric. Ah, yes, I will discuss differential geometric things, relation with lots of mining spaces, and uh, integrable structure behind it. I see. So, by the way, the given to formula I want to know is actually uh, the deformation of the formula you, write, you wrote on the board today, I think. Of so, course, of course. But you see, the, 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 this, this is the toric. Uh, uh, variety that's a point. I, I'm mapping a toric variety, it's a point. To a toric variety that is CPM, equivalent volumes. Then, so I think it's good to postpone one more week about uh, one more week. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, thank, uh, thank you very much. Yes, so tomorrow <laughs> I'll discuss. Okay, so tomorrow I will discuss the following thing I will discuss uh, uh, special coordinates equations solutions, uh, integrable structure, relation to loss of money in the uh, modular space. Okay. okay? Yeah. Good. Uh, I think this will be uh, the topic for tomorrow. Okay. Thank you for today's lecture. Okay. And Thank, see you. You. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. okay. See you. So see you. Bye.